Hello, folks. Welcome again. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. Let me center myself a little bit better. I'm here wearing my Bullet Club shirt because it's time to talk about AEW, a show which prominently displayed, actually at one time, four members of said club. Bullet Club. Uh, so let's get things started off. We start off with Pac taking on Kenny Omega in an Iron Man match. If you're not too sure how an Iron Man match w runs, it's you have, I think normally from, in the WWE, it used to be like an hour. I think now they cut to like half an hour because an hour is a long time to wrestle. Here in AEW, Iron Man match means there's 30 minutes. There's a clock. You wrestle for 30 minutes. Whoever scores the most pinfall submissions, DQs, or countouts, as we found out tonight. It was the winner. And then again, at the, they actually had a little scoreboard. It was Pac and Kenny Omega. And this was amazing. Wow. This was, it started off, uh, this is going to be a pretty long episode, mainly because of this. This might probably take five minutes to go through. Well, we'll see. So with this, we start off with good mat wrestling, counter for counter. These two are excellent pro wrestlers. They know what they're doing in the ring. They really know their craft. They've honed their craft. You're on a counter. Great stuff. Then, then they're like, okay, okay. You know, our wrestling knowledge is amazing. Let's just hit each other. Yay. Boo. Yay. Boo. That went on for a while. And again, some more counter wrestling. They're like, okay, 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 okay. This, this, this strike for strikes not not going, not working either. Wrestle, wrestle. And then again, it was really fun. There was a standing brutalizer. Pac really tried to take control of this. Uh, Kenny did that suicide flip over the rope when Pac was outside because I couldn't park Pac smart. Uh, a lot of times, Kenny Omega did go for the one wing angel. Pac like, no, 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 no. I'm done with that. And then, oh my god. Pac hit Kenny Omega with a super top rope brain buster. I've never seen that. I've seen the brain busta, but that's when El Generico would drop a guy head first onto the turnbuckle, which is padded. And it's, yeah, the distance is, is comparable just to a normal brain buster. This was from the top all the way down. And Excalibur picked up on that, and he was like, okay. I don't know. And then, they, and then Jim Ross is just weird. And he's like, if that takes the cake, he should win. It's like, Jared says, well, every time cakes, cakes and the cake comes to a wrestling match, you know someone leaves some wearing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, JR is getting bad sometimes. He's, I think he's almost getting bored of AEW. He wants to promote beans, his barbecue sauce. And leave it up to Chris Jericho to promote Omaha Steaks. That's neither here nor there, though. And then there was, again, the electric chair position. Uh, it's, that's, that switched up to a catch German suplex with roll. They were doing stuff. It's one. It's almost one of those near instances where you're like, I don't know they even could do that. I don't know the human physics of it would allow you to do that. Obviously it does, though. And there was the, the, uh, the Phoenix Powerbomb. And then just do the something to a Snapdragon to a V-Trigger. And Puck said, ah, I don't know, I've had enough of this. He, he brought in a chair. And oh, wow. Did he just give chair shot? He gave a couple of chair shots to Kenny Omega. And, and Kenny Omega, uh, between falls, they stopped the clock for 30 seconds. They thought they were in New Japan because the young bucks rushing with like water trying to revive them. Up, oh, thirty seconds is up. Okay, you two get out of here. Pox like, oh, oh, Boston Pox gonna hit the black arrow, hit the black arrow for the pinfall really quick. And you're like, that DQ victory, that DQ loss made sense. So for a while, it was Kenny won. Pox nil. Then of course after the Falcon Arrow. Pac got the pin. Kenny Omega won. 
Pac won. All tied up. And then it started to go on some more. Uh, there was a Falcon Arrow off the apron. Again, Excalibur. No one has won by a Falcon's Arrow in like 10 years, okay? Just say, oh, it's not the most devastating move at all professional wrestling. No, it's not. No one wins by Falcon Arrow anymore. And then, of course, we had I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Coo -coo -coo -coo. Uh, so with that, and there was that. There was a ref bump, too. Doctor was looking at the ref. So the ref's out on the floor. King Omega's getting checked on by the Young Bucks. Hawk brings out the table. I am the table. I am the table. I am the table. Coo -coo -coo -choo. So with that, Hawk put Kenny Omega up on the table and hit a shooting star press. From the top rope all the way through the table to the floor. Oh, wow. Pock. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. So great is Pock. He actually probably deserves some of this match. I understand why Kenny. Uh, then Bucks, because there was a, after that, Pock's in the ring. He's like, count him out, ref. And this Georgian accent. And the Young Bucks interfered, though. They threw Kenny Omega back in. Uh, he, he went for a second black arrow, but this time Kenny was smart. He got his knees up. Uh, Kenny Omega locked in the brutalizer in the middle of the ring, and then 30 minutes have elapsed. And it was 1 1. And then it said, Well, now we're going to continue for sudden death. Uh, with that, Pack got nailed right off the back. Uh, Aubrey! Aubrey, the ref! Got one of the bigger pops than some wrestlers did. Good for Aubrey. Aubrey is cute looking. Hey, Aubrey. I'm single. And ready to mingle. I got, I know what I'm getting back for my tax refund. <laughs> Actually, it goes, all goes to the truck. Pay the truck off. We need tires and... We'll see how that goes. We'll see what happens. So I still have my other jobs. Might postpone thing. But then, so Aubrey's there. That's the best. Again, Pac was so pissed off, he just destroyed the ref. Aubrey comes in running in. Kenny Omega hits the V uh, V trigger, one wing angel for overtime. So now it's Kenny Omega, two, Pac, one. Bye bye, Pac. Pac lost. Pac was just upset, like the proper Welshman he is. He was just in a bloody pissed off mood. Bodger. Then we had the Jungle Express taking on the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle, for the most part, was Sammy Guevara, Ortiz, and Hernandez. Taz then moved up to the announce booth. Taz, Taz, Taz. Beat me if you can. Survive. I let you. That's awesome. Taz is still the best. Again, he just likes the color orange, too. That's pretty cool. Oh, wait. Um, I forgot to say this. Uh, the, the, that, that Iron Man match, that was a filet mignon match. So now we have the Jungle Express coming out the tank on the inner circle again. Uh, Jungle Express, it's Marco Stunt, uh, Jungle Boy, Jesaurus taking on Sammy, Sammy Guevara, Hernandez, and Ortiz. This was kind of fun. Taz was there. Taz, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. So good to see Taz back announcing. I love the fact that Taz would give insights, and it was just fun to listen, and he adds stuff. So it's like, oh, well, when I was a professional wrestler, we never had this. I wish I had 10 more. I wish I had 
We used to have a five count. I wish I had five more seconds to beat up the guy. Whoa, that's insight. I've never been in an Iron Man match, but I definitely know what it's like to do that. And again, he's giving you all this personal insight from his wrestling days. It's just nothing mind-blowing, but it adds to the match there. Taz is darn good. Keep Taz. Maybe you're send JR off to pasture somewhere. Rolling barbecue sauce. Whatever. Again, with this, the inner circle. Again, there you just triple team. Poor Marco Stun. Marco Stun's going to be broken. Broken! Look at that. And then uh, there, there was the three amigos on to Marco Stun. And then he just started to pass them off. That delayed pass off vertical suplex to all three. That just looks great. Marco Stun's that small, they could probably do that too. And Sammy Guevara decided to like squat Marco Stun. I could do that from a little way. Marco Stun probably is the size of my nephews. Yeah, I used to do that to my nephews. So I'll do then do pick them up in my arms, hurl them too. Yeah. Guns, baby. Again, Aubrey. You could be holding this too. <laughs> so with all that being said, uh, eventually does make the hot tag to Luchasaurus. <laughs> like, uh, wow. I mean, there was a toss catch power bomb that was amazing. Eventually, uh, the inner circle did take out Lucha Express and and Jungle Jack, Jungle Boy Jack Evans, or no, not Jungle Boy. Jack Perry, I think Jack Evans. No, Jack Evans is different. Uh, the hot tags, Luchasaurus, he just takes up the inner circle, the Jungle Express. Can they start doing their own triple teaming? The ref was very lenient with that 10 count. That was a very long 10 count. Whoa. You get the point. Again, there was a snap her Karana, and the Jungle Express win. Uh, I'll tell you what, this was another fun match. Eventually, the inner circle wasn't happy. They speed up everyone, and then Darby Allen shows up. And he does his whole, like, card show. He's like the, the emo sign guy Dudley. But for the most part, I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. It has adds to it. This was a surf and turf match. It was the best friends uh, taking on the, the Blade and the Butcher and, and the Bunny. <laughs> or as uh, Jim Cornette called them, the, the Butcher, the Baker, the Candlestick Maker. And this is pretty good. And then the heels open up to the tag match. They just jump, the best friends. Chuck, uh, Trent gets beat up a lot until he makes a hot tag. Jack Taylor again. The Blade and the Butcher kind of have that really good dynamic. You know, the Blade, he's a little bit quicker. The, the Butcher has an amazing look. He looks like some like old timey English butcher. I mean, he has his little monocle when he comes out, and he just he's he has the Fu Man shoe, and he just I don't want to see this guy in a dark alley here in Daytona Beach. That would be bad for me. Uh, and then the bunny, and she pierced her tongue. Allie, you dirty slut! Terrible. I think one person did. just just said, if you want to see Allie, you know, Leva Bates do stuff to each other in the ring. Leva Bates, the whole librarian thing was bad. Very bad. But I'll get to what's happening in the women's division next. Um, so the blade again, he, it's his turn to get beat up the butcher for six out everyone. He had a fisherman neckbreaker. That was awesome. And then. You have all four men, uh, Trent, Chuck, the Blade, the Busher on the outside. Then Orange Cassidy steps in the ring. And the Bunny, Bunny Alley steps in the ring. And they face off. Orange Cassidy blocked the blocked the nut kick. Best way to describe it. You're a guy when I say exactly what I'm talking about. 
Uh, he blocked that. Again, he went to put his hands in his pockets. And the bunny took his sunglasses. Boo, bunny. And then, of course, Orange Cassidy not to get down took her bunny ears. And the hands went into the pockets. And he did a dive onto the butcher plate on the outside. That was kind of funny. Um, there was uh, the soul food, the half and half combo. The best friends won by whatever they're like. Oh, what's it called? Array, array, double something. I forget what it's called. But the best friends win. I was impressed. This was actually really fun. I want to see the butcher, the blade. I want to see the blade and butcher win something. Though. I mean, they they look like nasty heels. This was a cheeseburger match. And also knowing that Ali has a tongue piercing is, oh. I kissed a girl once with a tongue piercing. I almost bit her tongue off. She slipped me the tongue. I didn't realize she had a tongue piercing. I don't even know you could pierce the tongue back then. It hit my tooth. Ouch! It's like one of those things you can hear, like when you feel something, you feel it and you hear it hit your tooth. And my first reaction was, ah! After, ah. Uh, I almost bit her tongue off. That never again. Uh, so then we have actually, I'm gonna. I was impressed by this match because we had Omen's foursome. Oh, that sounded terrible. We had a woman's four way match. That doesn't sound any better. Um, it was. I'll say their names: Yuka Sawakasi, the uh, magical girl, taking on Big Soul, taking on uh, DBZ Shana. And by the way, where's Shana supposed to be from? Is she French or is she Portuguese? I can't tell. I think like the first couple episodes she was from France and she wore like um old school French colors of the Dauphine. I wanna say like powder blue and silver. Again, really old school. Of the, like, the Dauphine colors of the, like, the Fleur de Lis. Like you would see like typically on French banners. Before, I guess, the French Revolution? Probably. But now she's wearing her, her Dragon Ball Z Turtle Hermit outfit. Which actually looks kind of cute on her. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a future girlfriend Halloween gift. Indeed. But first I have to get that girlfriend. And we'll see what happens. Um, and then it was Hiro Kushida. Oh, she's just oh, and and that 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 hip opening. That's getting bigger and bigger. I like. See more skin down there. Oh, by the way, the cameraman does does no justice to those women. Every time, those women spread their legs. Where the cameraman just like zooms in, like right. Yeah. Uh, again, it was pretty, it was pretty fun. Uh, it was really fast, really fast. They tried to pass out of the gates. They tried to do a three, three way. So it's terrible. They did a three way Greco Roman test of strength. Um, uh, a Yuka, who's like the tiniest of them all. Even Taz called her like, yeah, she's like some like Japanese school school girl. Like, what what's she doing here? Big Swall at least at least is cut. Shana looks like a pro wrestler. And Hikarushita, she just looks badass. So one of these things is not like the other. One of these things doesn't really belong. Uh, so with that, she went in. <laughs> And, and broke up the, the three-way Greco-Roman test of strength. There were multiple quick pin attempts. That was the whole whole idea. Um, we were just trying to pin each other. Uh, it was a super kick, which was amazing because that was done while the one person was held up by the ring. Uh, Hikaru Shida, again, she tries to do that chair. 
But Big Swole had a scout it. Ashley caught her, too. Like, that was impressive. She knew it was coming. And I forget if... Oh, no, she got kicked in the face. But then everyone starts flying. So, again, uh, Yuka starts to fly because that's what she does. Again, if you're going to be that small, you might as well fly around and do flippy stuff. A Shanna, that buckle suplex into Yuka because Yuka got thrown. Um, again, Shanna did the buckle suplex onto Hiroku Shida and just, like, landed. The spots they were doing, it was fun. It was realistic. It was different. And I know supposedly Kenny Omega's been booking the women's division. I wonder if Cody kind of said, hey, Kenny, uh, what you're doing is not working. But change it. And Kenny's like, huh? It's like, okay, Kenny, I'll brand you do this stuff. Because they did get rid of the Nightmare Collective, which is really weird. I'm not necessarily a fan of them. And I know they just started as a wrestling promotion. I'm not really a big fan of them, like, cutting things quick. Like, what they're doing with the Dark Order, which I'll talk about next. They're doing the Dark Order right. But, well, we'll get back to this match. Uh, so, again, that uh, Swole misses something. She, she gets um, sent head first. The turnbuckle, Anna again, the fairy tale ending, and, and the hurricanrana. There was a double suplex, but shoved off. I mean, this was amazing. There was a ripcord elbow, a, the, the drive. Hikarushita did a driver of of um, uh, a Yuka on onto Pig Swole. That just looked nasty. It was the shiniest wizard, and that's how Hikarushita win. I was impressed. Again, you're missing a whole bunch of things. You're missing Nyla Rose, which might be good. You're missing Riho. My name is Riho, and I dance up on a stage. You're missing her. And most importantly, you're missing Britt Baker. Wow. Those three really do a freaking number, don't they? But overall, Takaru Shida won. I'll tell you what, I was impressed. It was a surf and turf match. And then the Dark Order. Wait! Because the Dark Order, I guess, is taking on SEU for Revolution. They like mentioned a whole bunch of matches that weren't actually on the match card, so they're kind of building it as it goes. Remember, folks, card subject to change. The Dark Order said, wait. Christopher Daniels, when we defeat SEU, you'll realize that you are obsolete. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Whoa, the Hardy brother is coming to AEW. Finally, the broken universe returns. Yes. And Brother Nero, who declares you to be obsolete. And broken Matt Hardy shall delete you. Delete! 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 Yeah. Then backstage we learned that uh, JR did an interview before the show with Hangman, Adam Page, and Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Page is just saying there he has his drink. I, of course, have my raspberry lemonade. He's just there like, yep, he has his belt. He's like, JR says, you're not saying anything. Me a question. JR's like, there. He's like. And then eventually, Hangman starts talking to him like, but Hangman, we brought you into Bullet Club. And then we, we made you part of the elite. And Paige is like, here I'm a champion. I've had more success here than anywhere else, and I've done it mainly by my own. Speaks the truth, though. Then, after a while, again, he's just there with his glass. He's like, oh, you know what? My glass is empty. I'm out of here. Hangman Page, you're making wrestling interesting again.
And then, close up the night with the weigh-ins. Uh, John Mossy comes in from the crowd. They invite some guy. And Chris Jericho ma makes fun of him. Uh, mainly because he mentioned, he's like, yeah, I remember you from WCW. <sighs> yeah. What have you been doing since? I think he is like a, a UFC announcer. Yeah, I was for a little bit. Uh, Chris Jericho comes in again. Uh, Moxie comes in the crowd. Chris Jericho comes in like 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 the Gracies. You have the youngest one in front, and that would have been Tony Guevara. Then all the hands on the shoulders, kind of going down. That was pretty cool. Uh, Jerry Jericho, he's just awesome. Uh, he says no. Cha the champion goes last, and uh, so Moxie weighed in. He off his boot shirts. Moxley's like 235, whatever he is, whatever. Uh, Jericho starts to undress. He does it very slowly first. He sunglasses. He's like he's going to get weighed in. Wait, wait, wait. I have to take this off. Then I have to take the belt off. And then Because this was in Kansas City. Oh. oh, 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 oh. the tomahawk shot. He's like, he's on. He says, shut your asses. Whoa. Cursing in my Chris Jericho. Uh, eventually, he, he doesn't get on the scale. He's because he's again taking his, his his time, and Moxley's had enough, and he just like Shibata headbutts him, and that busts Chris open. Whether he bladed or whatever, that looked as long as it wasn't a hematoma on the brain. It's all good. Uh, then Dustin comes out because eventually they just start beat, beat up Moxie. Because remember, there's like uh, six of them. Uh, Dustin comes down, takes Jake Hagar to the pack. It's like, no, not the dipping dots. But so that was that. Um, and then, of course, there's the hockey fight again. Eventually gets broken up. So we'll see what happens this Saturday. And, and oh, wow, that was it. But again, that was actually, I'll tell you what I mean. AEW is doing things right. They're just better than NXT. WWE Raw is still the best. SmackDown is still pretty good. Only because you know who you're dealing with. AEW is above Impact. So then eight, so uh, Raw, SmackDown, Impact. Yeah, Raw, SmackDown, AEW, Impact, NXT. Uh, NWA, Ring of Honor, and then New Japan canceled stuff. We're not going to have the New Japan Cup, but I had Yano going all the way. Yano had the easiest way there, I think. Well, at least the easiest first round. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Remember, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, check me out Thursday night when I do my recap and review of Super Showdown. Bye!